So singer Jo Stone just recently came out with the birth story of her second child, um, revealing that during the course of her labor, her uterus split, requiring an emergent delivery. Now, Joss Stone has a 21-month-old 21 child that she delivered via cesarean section due to breach presentation. I got that information from going through or coming through all the different articles. So, given that she was laboring for 30 at plus hours, according to her, for the second child, it, it was likely that she was undergoing what we call a trial of labor after cesarean uh, section in the hopes or in the attempt to have a successful vaginal birth after cesarean. However, it was either during the course of her labor, which she says she was laboring for 30 hours, or she was pushing, I couldn't really tell. Um, she says that the baby's heart rate went down very low and the baby went back, back up into her uterus and the baby split, and, and the uterus split, which is indicative of a uterine rupture. Of note, that baby was nine pounds, two ounces, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now, what I'm gonna speak on right now is a trial labor after cesarean or TOLAC after one prior cesarean delivery. First, when consider considering maternal morbidity or complications, there are the least complications or morbidity after having had a successful vaginal birth after cesarean section after a TOLAC. Then you have more complications or morbidity after having an elective repeat cesarean delivery. Then you have the most complications or morbidity if you were attempting to have, or you were attempting a trial of labor after cesarean and for whatever reason ended up with a repeat cesarean delivery. After one prior cesarean delivery, the risk of uterine rupture with having an elective repeat cesarean delivery is about 0.02%. But the risk of having a uterine rupture with undergoing a TOLAC or trial labor after cesarean is 0.7%. Uterine rupture after TOLAC results in the most significant increase in the likelihood of additional maternal or and or neonatal morbidity or even death. Now, as I said before, this baby was nine pounds, two ounces. So does that preclude or should that have precluded her from having a TOLAC? And the answer is no. Uh, a large baby alone is not a reason to not offer a TOLAC to an individual who desires it. Now, if someone is undergoing a TOLAC, it is essential that the facility where this is happening is capable of, of starting a, an emergency cesarean delivery, like in the event of a uterine rupture, within a time interval that best considers maternal and fetal risk and benefits with the provision of emergency care. And finally, and this is from ACOG, because of the unpredictability of complications requiring emergency medical care, home birth is contraindicated for those undergoing a TOLAC. Uterine rupture can be devastating if not undertaken in a facility that can deliver the baby in a timely fashion and then still sometimes the consequences can still not be what you want. So if, if you are wanting or even considering a TOLAC, be sure to tell your obstetrical care provider sooner than later.